Hi everyone, welcome to CityJS Berlin. I am not Max Schmidt, as you can see, but poor Max has come down with some sort of virus and he can't be here with you today, so really sorry about that. And therefore, I am standing in to give this talk. Um, I can't fly to Berlin because of my situation, so you're getting a remote. Sorry about that as well, but it's still going to be cool. So create, run and deploy end-to-end -end tests with Playwright and GitHub Actions. Let's dive straight in. My name is Debbie O'Brien. For those of you who don't know, I'm a senior technical PM at Microsoft advocating for Playwright. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What is Playwright? So Playwright is reliable end-to-end -end testing for your modern web apps. And it works on any browser, any platform, one API. Tests run in full isolation. They're super, super fast. And we've got some very powerful tooling, which I'll show you in this talk. And of course, it's multi-language as well. Although we're JS here and TypeScript, you could still write in .NET and Java or Python if that's what you want. First of all, let me tell you, the VS Code extension is amazing. So you really should uh, start using the VS Code extension if you're not already. You can install, run, write, and debug your tests right from VS Code. So really cool. CodeGen is my favorite. It's like, I just love when someone does the job for me. And that's what CodeGen does. So it literally generates your code for you and records your user actions. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. So I've got a little demo here. Um, basically, I'm just going to press record new from VS Code. And look at that. It's, it's created a file for me and it's opened a browser window. So my browser window, I'm going to type in the address that I want to test. So my lovely Contoso Traders website here. Perfect. So this is my website. Now if I go back to VS Code, look, test one spec file. It's imported test and expect. And it started my test block out with an await page go to with that URL. So I'm going to search for product here. Um, I think I'm going to buy an Xbox controller. So let's type into the placeholder Xbox. And you can see underneath it's highlighting um, the actual um, element of the page, the locator that you're going to use. So I'm going to take two of those because, you know, you can't play an Xbox on your own. I'll add it to the cart and I'll go to my cart and there's two. So that's perfect. And oh my God, that's so expensive. So it's way too expensive for me. So I'm going to remove it from my cart. I'm not going to spend that money. And therefore my cart is now empty. So there is a typical user flow. Now go to that VS code and all that is written there for me. So you can see this is really cool. Everything. Get by placeholder, get by roll image, get by roll button, click it, add to bag uh, and the remove button. Fantastic. So this is um, how powerful CodeGen is, right? I can run that test and you can see it's going to pass, right? And you're going to say, yeah, Debbie, this is great, right? Look at this. I'm showing the browser. I can see like a kind of a trace of my test and I can see every single uh, action that I've clicked has been recorded and done. But this is not a real test, right? We have to write the assertion. So here I'm going to like expect the page um, to have a locator of the Xbox and I'm expecting it to be visible on the page. And this is going to fail, I'm hoping, let's see, because I've pressed the remove button, right? So the product should not be on the page after the remove button. So if I move it now up into the cart before I press the remove button, that test will now pass. Perfect. I always like to fail my tests, you know, to make sure they actually work then later. So now I can copy that, um, remove one. And at the end, I can say instead of to be visible, let's add a not. I don't want it to be visible. That Xbox should not be in the cart. So let's um, add that not to be visible assertion and then we can just rerun that test and this time this is going to pass and I know I'm like super happy because my test is like yes this passed fantastic so this is code gen and you can see how quick and how easy and how fast that was now we did have to write the assertion ourselves but let me tell you this is like hot off the press we are working on a way that you can actually have assertions be generated for you don't tell anyone yet Shh. it's kind of like hot off the press news so yes we are going to make your lives much easier but for the moment until you hear from me again um you have to write that assertion yourself okay moving on ui mode so you saw a little bit of the trace viewer when we ran that test but i really really love ui mode because it's a really nice developer experience because you have watch mode and then your time travel debugging so let's take a look at a demo of what this looks like so I'm opening up in UI mode and I can press play and then I can see my test and I can walk through my test step by step. Now the example test is very simple, doesn't give me much information here, um, but you can see like I've got like those three kind of um, click events there going on. I can see the actions, I can see the source code underneath, I can see the DOM snapshot uh, showing me what's going on. But let's, let's take a better example. So I'm going to press play, that's the test we created, right? So I'll press play and I'll run that. And you can see the timeline at the top. The timeline is really cool as well. 
So I can see what's going on. I can see how the page was loading. Um, I can see what I wrote into that placeholder. I'm gonna write Xbox, there we go. And you can see then I'll go into each action. So I can go like uh, before, like, yeah, let's make it bigger so you can see it better. And I can kind of um, see the red dot. That's what Playwright is clicking. And um, here we've got the action. Yeah, the red dot is on that, um, that Xbox that I want, that lovely colorful one. Now it's on the plus button. So I can see exactly what's being clicked. And this is really good for debugging so you can know exactly if something was going wrong, what's Playwright actually clicking, uh, what is your user actually clicking, etc. And you can see here, like my test has failed. I was like, oh my God, I've got an error. What do I do here? So what happens when you have an error and you don't know what to do? Um, well, you've got to debug it, right? <laughs> Debugging, so much fun. So um, here I can see the error message. It's waiting for the get by label bag. So I've got to figure out, well, what happened there? That kind of looks good to me. Um, and I can go through other things like the log, the call. There's, there's a lot of information um, in here. The locator is, it's telling me get by label bag. Right, okay, that doesn't help me very much though. Um, you can also go and explore the network requests. Maybe there was something going on there. Uh, you can see the console, if there are any console logs. But my error is very clear. There's, there's a, there's a playwright's waiting for this get by label bag and it's just not finding it. So if I look at the source code, it tells me what line it, it's at. And if I look at the DOM snapshot, like there's a, there's a bag icon there and there's one in it. So why are you not getting it? Hmm. So this is where we kind of think like, what can we do in this situation? We can go back and we can kind of try and figure out what happened before. We put two products, we click the add to bag. So we did click it and you see the one is popping up there dressed right by the bag, that purple circle with the one, it's just right there. So that's working. So this is really working. It's sending it to the bag, but for some reason, Playwright cannot click on that bag. Why can Playwright not click on that bag? That is our question. And we can use the timeline as well. We kind of see, you know, what's happening here. But again, there's no red dot at that action for that um, bag. So how do we fix this? There's a couple of things we can do. Um, we can basically use the DOM snapshot. We can pop it out there. It's a DOM snapshot, not an image. We can inspect it, right? We can actually look at our code and say, right, what did the developer write here? What's stopping this from being found? And if we look very closely in here, we can actually see that our button has an aerial label of cart, right? And that's, um, okay, that's great. That's a lovely aerial label. It looks like a bag to me, but it's actually a cart. So you can see in the accessibility tree there, the button is called cart. Aerial label is cart, name is cart. So although our eyes are telling us it's a bag, the developer has decided it was a cart. We've got this kind of little mix match. Now you could do that whole DOM snapshot thing, which is really helpful sometimes, but you can also just click on the pick locator. And when you do that, you can actually just pick and then just click on it and it's gonna tell you get by label cart. So we didn't have to do all that other work of exploring the DOM, but it's also good to kind of understand what your developer is, is doing. So here I've got like get by label cart and I'm able to like even like play around with it. I can see what's being highlighted in the DOM snapshot itself. It's just really, really, really cool. Um, and basically once I'm happy with, you know, the actual get by label cart, I can then just copy it and I can put it back into my um, into my test and then rerun that test and everything will fail. So really, really good debugging experience there with the pick locator box. So once you've got everything fixed and you're ready, then GitHub Actions is the way to go. You wanna deploy it? Let me tell you that all you have to do is just like, you know, submit your code into um, GitHub and it just works. So you just like open a GitHub repo and just push everything because we give you the GitHub Action out of the box. And the GitHub action is gonna run your test on every pull request. Um, so basically, if it sees something that's wrong, it's gonna say, hey, this failed, and it means it will stop it being merged into production. So if it passes, then it's like, this is great. Like, I've got the green check mark, my test passed, so I can you know, merge that pull request. Now, if I have like a load of tests, imagine like loads of tests, what I can do is I can actually um, put those together, or sorry, separate them out. So I'm using sharding. So instead of like, say, have 230 tests, I can say, I want you to run across four machines, divide yourself into four. And this is gonna like then be a lot quicker. So that's really cool as well. And then you get a report that merges all them together. So all my tests, my 291 tests that have passed are in one report instead of having like four different reports. So that's what merge reporting. And I also have access to the trace viewer. If something failed on CI, I can basically download that trace of that test and I can open it up and then I can debug it just like we saw in UI mode, which is really, really cool. 
So Playwright, it's open source and free. Make sure you give us a star if you like what we do because we get paid in stars, really important to us. Um, make sure you're using Playwright because it's just amazing. We have an amazing group of ambassadors, follow their content, they're creating some great stuff. And join us on Discord, we have happy hour and we have a great community on there helping each other out. And basically my only question is, are you ready to Playwright? Uh, thank you very much everyone. I hope you enjoy the talk, enjoy the rest of the day and I'll see you later.